Hi, I'm Gene Cotter, co-founder and director of Basketball Jones Hoop Camps. I'm excited to be able to help you improve your skills and your knowledge of the game that we love. My name is A.C. Koski, Coach Ace, Basketball Jones Hoop Camps, Live Like Gino Foundation, one of the directors. I have to say I started playing basketball on Oahu, playing outdoors with a bunch of the Islanders out there, learning how to play tough and rough and not take any smack. And that was really a cool place to be competitive. Basketball was like one of those games for me that was a level playing field. So I was a little bit different, as you, as you can imagine. And basketball or football or baseball was a way for me to kind of prove myself, but also a way to kind of ooh and awe people that are watching because uh, you know, they didn't really expect somebody that was born different to be able to go out there and cross someone up or hit an open jumper or something like that. So that was a lot of fun and, and it made me feel good, so. In that era, in that generation, it was cool to bully, right? That was a time when it was like cool to point out the person who was a little bit different or didn't belong and kind of ride them and, and really ridicule them, if you will. Having to be tough and get through that uh, was certainly a lesson in, in perseverance. When you show your heart, you know, and you show what you're about and you just constantly come through and, and you kind of help others along the way, people see you, they recognize your heart, they recognize your spirit. And so I was blessed to be out there long enough to where, you know, I kind of gained some of that aloha spirit that can kind of bring that through camps and with the people that I meet. I just really love basketball, you know. Any way I could make a hoop uh, out of a cardboard box or some two by fours nailed together up on the side of a tree, I was doing it, man, because all you need is a ball and, and your imagination. You know, who you're playing against one-on-one, -on -one, oh, for the win, good or bad, out of bounds. Game seven, you know, coming up next. But the creativity, the imagination to be able to do it um, was something that I just really loved. And, and, and again, it's free. Just, I think it was the greatest sport ever invented. I just f fell in love with the game, you know, and I wasn't, very good. I just was not very good, you know. It was the first game, I still remember it. It was against Fortuna. I had eight or 10 blocks or something, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is, right? This is just gold right here, you know? So basketball's taken me overseas. Basketball's taken me, you know, to uh, Jamaica. Um, it's taken me to the Himalayan mountains. I believe wholeheartedly in, in the musicality of the game of basketball. I've equated it in the past to jazz music, where it's you can freelance and you can flow a little bit. You know, we're talking about tempo, we're talking about rhythm, we're talking about harmony. Basketball has probably been the most influential thing in my entire life. Basketball gave me what nothing else really could. Basketball was the one thing that we loved more than anything. It was our first love. We would just play it at, at before school, at break, at lunch. You know, then we go to Redway and play after school. I'm here talking to you right now because of that, that ball. We just love hoop, so we were going everywhere, anywhere to get hoop all the time. And uh, yeah, man, that was Gino. So Gino actually lived on my dirt road. Gino and Emma and Eddie and Will. You could hear Gino dribbling his ball down the dirt road. They were probably up two miles and they would have to walk to school and walk back. So you would hear him in the morning at about seven o'clock and you would hear Gino's ball. You knew it was Gino's ball. So I've known Gino since I was about probably four or five, somewhere in there, I would say. Gene was just that captivating high school player that could have scored 40 points every night. No problem, but we wouldn't have won. Gino scoring 15 to 20 and doing everything else made us a good team. So it was a good experience, a good, good ride we had there. Taught me a lot about basketball and life at the same time. Back in the South Fork days, Gino was, he was the program. In Gino's senior year, there were six players from freshman to senior that ended up going on to play college and university level basketball. In the previous six decades, there might have been three.
he would draw everybody and I just remember it was almost every day, you know, in a little tiny town with 12 or 15 kids in our class, in our grade, but we would still be out there playing five on five. I was a younger kid, I was four years younger than Gino, and, and so I made 10 in the town. And then it was time to go home. Gino would say, no, 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 now you make eight because those two just left. So now, okay, well, I can't let Gino down. I, I own that. So Recruiting everybody, let's go play basketball and all the hype and all the fun. Until it was Gino and I trying to play full court one-on-one. -on -one. And of course he'd destroy me, but he would play left-handed so that it was close. Without a doubt, like Gino, you know, was the basketball culture in Southern Humboldt. I'd say the biggest thing that I learned from Gino is the passion side of it. The passion that Gino had for everything. Basketball, surfing, boogie boarding, his friends. We'd come back to Southern Humble and the whole community knew that he was our shining star. Everyone was so happy for him to see him move on to go to college, but then I think it was even more of an impact when he came back and brought Basketball Jones back because it wasn't just, that was a feel-good story. This was the camp coming back to town was actually doing something. The brilliance of his idea was we're gonna take the camps to the kids. We're not gonna ask them to come hours and hours away. He fully understood that. Being a rural kid himself, you don't get those opportunities. We were at my mom's house in Redway, and we were in the kitchen, and he said, I'd really like to do a, a basketball camp at, at South Fork. We'll get people we know, or some of the high school kids, to be the coaches. He said, hey, let's do this. You know, what, what do we need? And he goes, well, we need money for insurance, like $600, I think, in my account. And so my mom says, you know what? You don't know what's going to happen, what you can do until you try it. We went for it. And, you know, kind of the rest is history. It wasn't about making money. It was about providing that service for the kids. Instantly, the feedback on the philosophy of basketball Jones took. He was the vision and the go do it guy, and I was kind of the, the detail guy. We were able to put a plan in place and get organized and really started to scale it up, which was fun. I firmly believe that the majority of the quality basketball players that came out of Santa Cruz County over the past 15 plus years have some tie to Basketball Jones. I doubt strongly that there's a kid worth his salt that hasn't been impacted by Basketball Jones and Gino directly. Hi, I'm Haley Jones. I'm from Santa Cruz, California, and I currently play uh, basketball at Stanford University. Here to uh, do our interview with this is our most outstanding player, Haley Jones. I think my first Basketball Jones camp was probably when I was eight or so. So me and my brother started going to those, and then we started doing basically two a year for a few years. From these camps, you guys teach people how to interact with one another, how to be a good teammate, which then helps you be a better person. You're 
a selfless basketball player, which means off the court, you know, you're being inclusive. You're not going to exclude anybody. You're going to just be a good person. So I think that once you leave camp and now you're doing things differently, I think that that's what I'd like to see continue through these camps is just the value of being a whole person and that basketball is something that you do, but it's not who you are. One, two, three. My name's Jackie Turner, and I'm a player development coach. Growing up, basketball Jones meant a lot to me. You know, growing up in Fort Bragg, that's the only camp that came to town. So it was the, the highlight of the summer, every summer as a young kid. It, I think one of the biggest things I learned from Gino and the basketball Jones culture is uh, acceptance of everybody. Uh, there wasn't anybody who stepped into that gym that wasn't welcome and, and part of the tribe as soon as they got there. And so that's what I try to bring to everything I do is if you want to learn to love this game, I'm here to help you. It did make you fall in love with the game because everybody was so stoked on it because Gino set that tone. If 10 of those kids out of the 70 that I saw out there go on and feel that energy under them, they're going to go on to do something. And that net gain that they got, a little bit of that's going to get passed on to wherever they are. So Basketball Jones is just like that web. <laughs> he always said he would never be able to, you know, work a nine to five job. Like that just wasn't in his, uh, realm of capabilities, I guess we would say. Yeah, I just felt like he had this calling to, to work with youth and be around the game, it's just the love of the game. The other woman, I always called basketball the other woman. <laughs> what was the Basketball Jones culture like in those early years when you first started? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, the culture of the hoop. Wow, that's a really good question. I would say Gino wanted to pay his best friends to play hoop. And in the early days, it was literally just freestyle and fun. I know personally why I was so inspired to help because of uh, not only his vision for the camps, but also just wanting to, to please him because he was such a great, a great friend, a great person. He would just, you know, bebop around town, you know, half skipping barefoot in board shorts and hopefully he's wearing a shirt, maybe not. But, you know, everything about Gino was just passion and love and fun. And he's like Peter Pan with all the lost boys. Like all these guys just want to be around him and follow him around. And that's how we all were for all these years. And there it was, we started hooping. And I'm playing amongst these guys that are six, seven, six, six, again, in a situation where uh, I wouldn't get the opportunity to play otherwise. I'd be the guy that they're like, yeah, you got next, or you got next, you know? Yeah, you're too short, or you're too this or that. And Gino's like, no, you're on right now, and you're on my team. I was like, oh. So he was just setting the table, and I remember Rick Mayhew was out here dribbling, and the guy, I would say, like, from right here, he throws his fast break, bounce pass, from here, up top square, he just comes, and Mayhew right there, And from then on, I was just like, I'm sold, man. Wherever you're going, I'm going. Whatever you're doing, you're doing. Whatever you need me to do with you, I want to do it with you. And he just became just the, the biggest, bestest friend, brother, mentor. I just, that dude was great with people. Everyone loved him. He was just vibing. Everybody was so just magnetized to that energy. And I was just like, Maybe I just want to hang out, bro. Let me just ride the wave with you, bro. You just, it's a beautiful thing. The energy level was you know, intoxicating right when you walked in. You couldn't help but smile, you know, and looking around and the coaches are having fun. And they called it going on tour because it was this brotherhood of coaches that would come back year after year to be a part of camps, but more so a part of him. I left with Bailey and Brody to Tahoe for with the week we were going up there for the week because he had camp in San Jose. And I remember I got, um, our phones were linked together. So he sent himself a text. He would always send reminder texts to him, himself, you know, to remind him 
to get milk for camp in the morning or whatever it was. And he sent a text, um, call Tiff and remind her that you love her, you know. He sent himself that text knowing that I would get the text because for some reason. So he called me and he's like, did you get, did you get my text? And I'm like, yeah, you're so, you could just call me and say that. He, he thought it was funny. So it was 1 o'clock in the morning, and I got a knock on my hotel door. And I looked through the little people, and it was two police officers. So I went out in the hallway, and they asked me if um, my husband was Gene Cotter, and I said yes. And they said he's been in a car accident. And they said, unfortunately, he passed. My phone rings and it says Tiffany Carter on it, right? But that was a moment that was like, everything kind of stopped. You know, sound left, you know, vision's blurry. What's the next thing, right? And so that's when she kind of was like, you need to carry this thing on. You know, you need to go to camp, you need to do it, you need to step in, hold it down. You know, the hardest was for, for me, I mean, for me personally, but more that Bailey and Brody, didn't have it anymore. The outpour from everyone was amazing, right? It, it really it really hadn't resonated for me personally until well after camp had concluded. I'm talking like years. It took me a long time to actually deal with the loss of, of this man who saved my life, the mentor of my life, the guy who gave me direction the man who gave me a reason and a purpose to live. I'd like to take a moment of silence real quick to honor my brother Gino, all our brother Gino, for the stuff that he's done, all the work he's put in, so that we can have this great camp experience in Carmel. It didn't happen overnight. It took year after year after year after year. Great coach, great coach, great coach after great coach making these type of uh, commitments and efforts and contribution into the community youth to get to this point. So please, if we could have one uh, good moment of silence for Gino. Now make some noise for Gino! Yes! After we heard of Gene's passing and we had, you know, notified friends and family, I saw Benny, you know, and said, hey, and I remember, distinctly remember him asking, so, so what now? This isn't where Gene ends, right? Well, this could be a nonprofit where we could give kids this gift of hoop and we could evoke in them their most authentic best. The Live Like Gino Foundation is a foundation that we created in Gino's memory in order to continue his legacy. I really think it's just a way where we can grow off of what Gino created and give back to kids, give back to, to basketball, and give back to the community. The star, you know, it burnt out, but we gotta keep the light going. That's why the Live Like Gino Foundation has the name it has, is because if you spend enough time with Gino, you wanna live like Gino. There's different divisions of the Live Like Gino Foundation. We have a build up, we have a play up, we have a reach up and we have a lift up vision. They all end with the word up because, you know, Gina was upbeat. It was all about making yourself better than who you were before. We have our reach up division and that's our college scholarships that we give. Currently we give scholarships at uh, South Fork High School, which is our, the team's alma mater, and Hollister at San Benito High School, out in Gilroy at Christopher High School. And our plan is to eventually expand that out to all the places where we, where we do work. And then Lift Up is a newer division, and we want it to be a place where families who've lost a parent might be able to come, and we can lift them up through resources to help navigate their process of grief. You know, there's no right way to deal with grief, but I think just being a part of that club you don't want to be a part of, um, having somebody else that's gone through it has been helpful for me. And then the play-up division is our basketball program. So play-up, we have our summer basketball camps, our spring AAU travel teams, our winter clinics, and our group training. Our build-up program, that's building the courts. So how can we make our communities better? 
We build state-of-the-art facilities with glass backboards, single breakaway rims, fresh black top lines, benches, and lights at night so kids have a safe place not only during the day, but also at night to come and get their hoop on, meet people and have a healthy outlet. We've already built two courts, one up in uh, Redway where, where Gino grew up playing ball, um, and then also one in Hollister where he, he started his family. Foundation's doing a great job with all of that, keeping on his legacy, what he wanted, how he lived. Same with Basketball Jones, the same thing. I think he would be very proud of Uncle Ace, and I think he would be very proud of everyone. He's doing a great job with camps and foundations and everything. That's what I think. <laughs> I remember when it first started, and it just was like a, imagine like we're gonna build courts and give kids scholarships and stuff. It just was like a little image, and now it's like actually here, and it's like happening. It's crazy. I loved him very much, and I want to be like him when I grow up. That's the person. If someone was to ask me, who would you want to be, I would say my dad. I would say Jim Potter. Because I do. He was very positive and very just, like, motivating. And everything that, like, someone did, he would be cheering on them on. He would be so proud of them. He would, even if he didn't know them. I think this is just perfect. But I know there's more to come, and I'm excited to see what's going to come. So, yeah. After Gino's passing, we wouldn't be here talking if it wasn't for Ace. If it wasn't for Ace's driving force to keep the camps alive, that passion. It was like when Gino passed on, Gino's little like, light got pushed over to Ace there. Do I want circumstances to be different for me to be in this position? The damn right. Would I trade my life for his to be back? In a heartbeat, right? But I can't. I can't do that. I have to live. I have to live my life to honor him for the things that he's done. So he just continually saves my life, and he continues to show up in my life with people just like you, with other coaching staff, with other kids that might show me just a glimpse of how he used to act. You know what I mean? And that's just that's life. That's love, man, right there. So the ability to live with that spontaneity, like a, it's like this childish charm that he had, I think that's really what I admired and value and try to aspire to be like. I used to tell this to you Gino know, uh, when he was alive, I used to tell him, man, you're the best person I ever met. I've never met nobody like you. And he used to look at me kind of like, you know, kind of crazy, like, like, you know, where are you going with this? I said, no, but no, but I'm just telling you, just, I want you to know, you're the best person I've ever met. And I, and I don't know if you ever believed me, but it's without question, you know, it's hands down the best person I've ever met. If I could say something to Gino, it would be thank you. I literally owe everything to the encouragement that he gave me. You wanted to be by him, you wanted to talk with him, and he wanted to talk with you. And let him know that I miss him, and I love him, and he lives in my heart every day. I had another thing to tell Gino. I'd also tell him we did a great job raising his kids. They turned out to be great young people, and it's pretty cool to watch, and he would care. Yeah, that would matter to him. When life, you know, gets hard, you can reflect back on the days of Basketball Jones and the Live Like Gino Foundation that are here to lift you up, make it known. He taught me was, you know, it's not about what you have, it's about what you make of it. And it's not about where you're at, it's about who you're with. And, and those, those are two really, really main things that I think we need more of around the world. I love you. I miss you. That's it. And just to hope you're, you know, you know, you're probably up playing hoops and, you know, enjoying it. His kids are amazing. Tiffany, his wife, is incredible. And, uh, I would let him know that his, his legacy is not gonna die. That uh, Gene Cotter's here to stay.
partnering up with people that are like-minded, that really put tomorrow's leaders, tomorrow's generation first above all else. And that's the biggest investment that any of us can make, and that's into the youth of our community. And we just want to get together with, with other programs and other nonprofits and people who want to build up that, that generation of kids, to build up those leaders so that they, that they can continue to pay it forward in the essence uh, of Gino. And just to really honor his legacy, man. That's really the goal of the foundation is to honor his legacy and keep it as pure and as close to his heart and his love for it humankind as we possibly could. Can we do it? Probably not. This dude was surreal, the best, but we can definitely all get together and do our best in doing so. So that, that's the goal, man. That's really the goal.